There we go. It turned red. The recording is on. For those recording, we have a small uh, audience today, and we just did introductions before we turned on the recording. Um, but we're going to go ahead. And so the title of the session today is Upgrading from Drupal 7 to Backdrop CMS. Uh, I had a, a dreams about actually doing an upgrade today, a simple one, uh, sort of a live demo. There are, uh, but we're not going to do that. Uh, for, I just wasn't able to get that ready. Also, I'm not really sure that that's probably the most best use of our time anyways, because it sounds like maybe just checking and you know, talking about what backdrop is. We will talk, walk through the process of how you can do an upgrade, um, uh, but on a more abstract level um, today. Um, again, my name is Tim Erickson. I uh, have a company, Triplo. Uh, one of my co-founders is here who uh, is no longer uh, working with me, uh, unfortunately, but um, maybe someday again. Um, and we do uh, Drupal work, backdrop work, and uh, we do actually support a few WordPress sites as well as uh, recently did our first phone app. Um, anyway, so let's, uh, uh, I have my on the screen my uh, uh, Mastodon account. We were talking about a little bit before that started. That's my primary social media uh, vehicle uh, today, although I am uh, on all the, the backdrop channels as well. I am a member of the pro uh, project management committee for the uh, backdrop uh, project um, and I am an active contributor to the project as well. Uh, but do, uh, I also do Drupal work and still contribute to the Drupal community as well. Um, and I, my recent hobby has been taking drone photography and posting it on the web, so there's a few photos there. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what Backdrop is, how it's different from modern Drupal. Um, we can talk a little bit about how you might make the choice, whether, whether you we should use Drupal or Backdrop, what the differences are. Um, I'm, go I'm going to talk walk through the, the upgrade process. If you have a Drupal 7 site um, and you want to upgrade it to Drupal 7 or to, to Backdrop, uh, and we, you know, we could talk a little bit about how that differs from if you're doing a, a, a modern Drupal uh, upgrade. And for those of you who aren't familiar the, the, or, or, or don't refer to, it, it, it's been it's been difficult to know what to call Drupal, the, the current version of Drupal, because it's changing so often. So Drupal 8, 9, 10, so some of us have started just settling on modern Drupal as a term to refer to anything Drupal 8 plus, and, that, and that's what I'll be doing today. I'll talk about modern Drupal. And yeah, and then I, we, there, there are some uh, good tools and resources out there. We'll talk a little bit about those. Um, comparing backdrop, so what backdrop is, I'm going to step back even a hair further because I know at least one person in the room, I think, might appreciate that. Backdrop is a fork of Drupal 7. So during the Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, uh, uh, the process of, of developing Drupal 8, uh, it became apparent to the founders of Backdrop that the shift was a pretty radical shift in terms of uh, 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 coding practices and the, the work that was going to be involved in going to Dru from Drupal 7 to, to, to Drupal 8 was going to be a much bigger deal than what was originally. And we knew it was, we always knew it was going to be a big deal, and it turned out it was going to be an even bigger deal. And uh, basically requiring any custom code to be like completely rewritten. Um, and the feeling was that there were a lot of Drupal 7 sites that didn't need a lot of what Backdrop had to offer, uh, a lot of Drupal 7 sites that didn't need a lot of what modern Drupal had to offer, um, and didn't really benefit from having to do all of that code refactoring. And the goal was to create an easier upgrade option that kept a lot of the power of Drupal, but uh, with a, you know, a more focused approach and that didn't uh, require quite as much effort. And so they, uh, they forked Drupal early in the Drupal 8 uh, development cycle uh, before they put, I think, Symfony in. Um, and basically some of the, the, the new features, a few of the new features, things like uh, CK Editor and Core, uh, Views in Core, uh, there is a configuration management uh, in Backdrop. Uh, the config management is a little different. It, well, it's definitely different than it is in modern Drupal, but uh, they got that in there. Um, the, the they also at that time uh, the feeling was that uh, that 
that Drupal was was uh, sort of focused more on ambitious projects, and it sort of the values, the, the the mission and purpose of Drup of modern Drupal was changing a bit, and that felt a little bit unfair. And Backrop wanted to be really clear about who their mission is, who they're serving, so that people weren't afraid that the same kind of thing would happen for them. So Backrop has a uh, 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 Backrop.org. There's a philosophy page with mission and, and vision and values. And uh, two of the important values for the backdrop community are valuing the needs of editor and, and architect over the needs of developer and valuing uh, contrib developers over the needs of core developers. So we really want to support the community, the people using backdrop above the, the, the core developers and focus on what their needs are. Um, one of the reasons Drupal, modern Drupal has become so complex is that there's a lot of sort of niche functionality built into it that is really powerful but serves a very small number of websites. And um, uh, Backdrop said we're going to not worry about, about that niche functionality and really focus on the functionality that serves most of the websites. So when we're, we're talking about adding a new feature to core, the first question everybody asks is it does it there's a uh, we have kind of a rule of thumb that it should serve 80 percent of the users right if we're if we're building a new feature that that is only going to uh, benefit a, a minority of the the site owners then maybe it's not something we want to put into core certainly something that can happen and can trip um, a lot of uh, uh, things were stripped out of, from Drupal 7 or from, or, yeah, from Drupal. A lot of things were stripped out that were no longer necessary. Some of those things were stripped out, stripped out of modern Drupal as well, um, but others uh, weren't. Um, things like, there's a, let's see, do I still have that page open? Yep, features removed. So a number of modules, a lot of, some of these modules were also removed from Drupal. Um, I don't know if all of them were. Things like the forum module, the blog module were removed, uh, but also things like support for multiple databases. Very few sites actually use that. It's an extra layer of abstraction, and uh, we just removed that. Uh, Backdrop just supports MySQL, which is probably 95% or 99% of the, the Drupal sites out there. Support for alternative field uh, storage, things like that. So there were uh, definitely some things pulled out of background. Um, some of the factors, if, if you're uh, uncertain, like why, should I go with backdrop or should I go with modern Drupal? Uh, these are some of the factors that, so uh, my shop is we moved some of our clients from Drupal 7 to, to modern Drupal and we moved some of them to backdrop. And you might ask, so how do you decide which is which? And it's often, these are the kind of factors that we look at. First of all, the budget, um, the complexity of the project, uh, what kind of maintenance budget they have, uh, need for specific models, modules, excuse me, factors in, and context. Um, and I'm gonna I'll talk a little bit more about some of this stuff in, in, um, in some of the examples we have, for example. Um, when we've chose uh, backdrop CMS, it was for reasons like budget. The client just didn't, uh, moving to, to modern Drupal uh, uh, is almost always more expensive. Uh, the cost of hosting a modern Drupal site is more expensive than hosting back, Backdrop. Backdrop will still run comfortably on uh, simple shared hosting. Um, it doesn't uh, require quite the overhead that modern Drupal does. Uh, so so we, we, we also have situations, we've had some sites that were really, you know, slightly advanced uh, brochure sites, and they just don't need modern Drupal. And so uh, Backdrop made, made much more sense for them, and they probably didn't need Backdrop either, but we could do that simple enough that uh, we did. Um, when we certainly prefer the editor experience uh, of, of Backdrop. So um, in cases where we tr chose Drupal 9, it was for things like uh, we had a, a client that um, probably could have used Backdrop cheaper, but it didn't was nervous about the small community. <coughs> Backdrop community is uh, much smaller; uh, it's growing, but this client had been using Drupal for a long time, knew that there were hundreds of thousands of Drupal sites out there, and just wanted the comfort of being a part of that. And and you know when we told them it was going to cost a little more, they said that's okay, and so we did that. Um, in another case, we, 
people who did a, a brand new site. This was not an upgrade for a large uh, for a large research project based here at the University of Minnesota. And in that case, again, we probably could have built their site in Drupal, but knowing the context that they wanted an institution that was primarily Drupal, that there are thousands of hundreds of Drupal developers around the campus here and very few people that do backdrop, I don't know, I just felt better putting them on a site where that wasn't going to be different, that fit more in the context um, of, of the university. And and so that, that was a choice we made. Uh, we. We recently moved a, a, a site from Drupal 7 to uh, to Drupal 9 um, because we haven't quite upgraded them to Drupal 10 yet. Because they made their uh, uh, they use they use the domain access module heavily, which has not been ported to Backdrop. So uh, there are about a thousand modules right now um, for Backdrop. You know, uh, many hundreds. Uh, you know. Probably eight or nine. You know, some of them are new, fresh modules, but pro most of those are probably Drupal seven modules that have been ported to Backdrop. So a lot of the modules you're going to need have been ported or could easily be ported to Backdrop. But there are cases like uh, the, the domain access is a case where it's a complicated module with a whole suite of sub modules, and unless you uh, are willing to you know uh, get in there and help us port those modules. Um, you're probably going to, and there, and there has been talk about porting the domain access module. There's a number of groups that are interested in it, but it hasn't happened yet. So we didn't, and we were not prepared to take that on ourselves. So we just went with uh, Drupal 9. Uh, Commerce module would be another case. Uh, the, the backdrop ecosystem right now, Ubercart, is the primary commerce module, which um, I had never used before, but I've installed it on some backdrop sites, and it's actually pretty robust, very stable, does what you know, does uh, surprisingly a, a, a lot of stuff, but it's not the commerce module. If you need the commerce module, use that in Drupal 7. Um, that's not a light lift to, to, to port the commerce module and the whole ecosystem around that. So something like that might be a reason for you to stick with uh, modern Drupal. Another uh, use case for uh, backdrop uh, a lot of people think of backdrop as just for small sites, nonprofits, uh, very simple sites. Uh, one case, uh, a kind of a use case that's different from that is uh, the Stanford site. Um, and if you just Google uh, back Backdrop in Stanford, there's a bunch of really good presentations on, on this where they talk about it. But uh, this is a high traffic, uh, uh, very ambitious website that was in Drupal 7. And they chose to go with Backdrop because they had tons and tons of custom code and upgrading to Drupal, modern Drupal would have required them to rewrite all of that code. They had done that for other websites. They knew what was involved. This was also a site where they were continuing to add features. They had full-time developers that were adding features, you know, on a monthly basis to this site. And uh, uh, switching to uh, modern Drupal would have pretty meant much set meant ceasing development on new features, spending like six months upgrading the site, rewriting all of their code. Um, to get it to modern Drupal, um, that where they, whereas they estimated because because backdrop the the API differences are, are, are much smaller, um, they could do some minor refactoring and, and and use a lot of that custom code with much much less work, and they ended up I think instead of spending six months they only spent about two months, which meant meant that they had four months to, that they could get back to, to doing new features. Um, they they've written some nice blog posts about this. And they estimate that they saved two or three hundred thousand uh, dollars by going to Backdrop instead of Modern Drupal. Uh, not to mention the the, the the save that opportunity cost of again having several months of not being able to, to do new stuff because they were so focused. So this is another kind of use case for for Backdrop. This, uh, I think, just a blog post by Irina Zax, uh, actually uh, uh, does some work. She lives out in the Bay Area, does some work at Stanford, but uh, she's written a couple of, of good blog posts around upgrading. Um, I've co-presented with her on this, this topic before. Um, she's been really active in, in trying to help uh, simplify the process of upgrading from Drupal 7 to Backdrop. Uh, I'm going to pause for a second. Any questions on what we've talked about so far? Um, do we 
I, I, I can jump into the upgrade process, but I could also focus more on what Backdrop is. I do have a demo site spun up. We could look at Backdrop if you want. <laughs> what would be most useful to some of you? Do you anything? Preference? Upgrade or learning more about what Backdrop is? For, for me, probably learning more about what it is. Just what it is? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, half and half for me, so might as well go okay. that direction. If, if, okay. If I'm, well, well I, I it sounds like you. <laughs> It doesn't sound like they're going to be doing an upgrade as a front-end developer, although um, we could talk uh, quickly about that um, in doing an upgrade, and this is also relevant to what Backdrop is. Uh, one of the changes, one of the biggest changes in Backdrop from uh, Drupal 7 is the separation of themes and layouts. So in Drupal 7, you, you would write a theme and you would have PHP custom template files within that theme and that was sort of the standard way of doing things. Backdrop includes uh, a layout system built up, built uh, on the panels idea, but it has a much better, use, a simpler user face. It's not all the panels, right? We took some of the best parts of panels, put a nice UI on it, and it's built into Backdrop. And that gives you a lot of um, right in core ability to create layouts, okay? and. So the need sort of for, for layout template files is much less. And if you do, there are layout files that come in core, but they're, they're separate from the theme. So you, you pick a layout and you pick a theme. And there's sort of two separate choices. Now, if you're upgrading your own site, I mean, you can still put uh, theme, uh, layout uh, temp theme, like you can modify the layout files in your theme if you choose to do that, but kind of the standard way is to separate those two things. So the theme in uh, Backdrop is much more like a skin. It's, a, it's, it's primarily CSS, JavaScript. Uh, your layout stuff is done in separate layout files or just using the, the core layout files. We also, since Backdrop was originally launched, have added uh, a, the ability, a sort of a flexible uh, layout builder so that you can create your own layout templates in the UI without you know, having to actually create layout files. And Does this mean, for instance, yes. does this mean or not mean that if, I, if one of my sites is uh, uh, heavily using panels in Drupal 7, that it would be easier for me to port that? Or is it like panels uh, but not enough like panels that, that I would have to start from scratch. I think the latter is true, but I'm not sure. Wilbur might have some insights on that. Um, I don't know that if your Drupal 7 site is in panels, if, if those panels are going to upgrade. I don't think so. Okay. Um, now, I reach out to Jen Lampton, who's a, who's a big advocate of, of panels and has done a lot of these upgrades, and she may have some tricks. I wouldn't be at all surprised if she has some tricks uh, in terms of how to simplify that process. She has done some interesting presentations on like porting. For, for, for our purposes, anytime we've done an upgrade like this, we just start fresh with a new theme. Okay. Jen has done projects where she's ported themes from Drupal 7, and we have some recordings of her talking about this that okay. you could look up, and she talks about sort of how to manage these kinds of things. Uh, so it is possible, but part of the reason uh, I brought this up is one that, that it, there is this difference and two in terms of doing an upgrade that's one of the big if you've got a fairly simple backdrop site you can pro, you, you might be able to, to port the, the all the content and configuration in a couple of hours okay but even in that best case scenario your theme isn't going to work right. so the biggest one of the biggest things to think about when you're considering an upgrade is that you're going to pretty much have to build a new theme probably unless you're going to be content if it's a really simple site and you're happy with one of the uh, core th uh, contrib themes that are available for backdrop that's great um, and uh, Jen has recently released a module which is supposed to sort of help make it easier to run Drupal 7 or to, 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 to reduce the amount of work to, to port a theme, like if you have a custom theme for your Drupal 7 site and you want to port that, she's, she's uh, uh, created a module that's supposed to be sort of a helper file that adds a bunch of classes and stuff that will maybe make your theme work better and reduce the amount of work, but it's not going to be seamless, right? You're not just going to take your Drupal 7. Um, Go ahead. I think our friend Justin had a panels site. 
he changed those panels into blocks. Oh, okay. And then when those, then those blocks came over and were available in the layout builder to be placed on the pages. That makes sense. So it depends how many pages you have. Right. You know, and how much, how much content. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So. so I went ahead and jumped. Uh, if you go to backdropcms.org, there is a there is a demo button and if you click on that and click create demo sandbox in about 30 seconds it's going to spin up a free temporary site so you could play around if you haven't uh, tried backdrop yet and you want to actually get into it this is a temporary site it's only going to last 24 hours but you can do anything on it you can even add themes and uh, and, uh, and, and modules and uh, one of the differences of backdrop from, well, it's not a difference anymore. <laughs> it's just very, very recently Drupal added the project browser. I think it's now official, isn't it, in, in Drupal 10? Or in one of the recent releases? Uh, it, it, it's been and in, in, in works for years. Uh, Backdrop has had a project browser for since, you know, for the last six or five or six years. And so we can not we can do things like, let's do a theme. Oop, I, uh, it's just gonna, this, uh, the, my preview site uh, spun down. It's just got a, there it goes. So if you can go into the theme setting, and these are basically the core themes. It comes with Barctic, uh, that's sort of the default theme, just like it was in Drupal 7. But we can go to install new themes. Uh, we can try out some of these things. Uh, Pellerine isn't a bad one to just show this process. Uh, so we can add a theme. This is a little bit like WordPress. Uh, not something you can do in Drupal 7. And we've just added the theme. We can enable it, enable it and set default. And there we go. We've, we've got a new, you know, a new contrib theme running on our, our backdrop site. And, you, and so you can use these demo sandboxes to test stuff like this out. You can also download and install modules in these demos. So if you want to try out, again, if we go to the, um, the modules page, we can stay inst install new modules and uh, uh, configurable block styles. Can I just do a partial word? I forget. Oh, uh, how about if I do block? Um, configurable block styles. I could add that and download it. That just, the configurable block style module, I'm a, a, a co-maintainer on, is why I thought of it. It's a, a module that lets you, through the UI, add like a border around your block or some, some interesting things like that. It's simple. I, I like it, but uh, not that important. But but you, again, you can uh, set this up. Since we were talking about layouts, we'll take a quick look at that. Um, so in, in Backdrop, uh, uh, one of the recent changes to Backdrop, uh, if you've looked at it but not recently, is we added a third content type in core out of the box, uh, a card content type. And, and what we wanted to stress, uh, we also have, uh, if anybody's used hidden, um, hidden paths, so if you have a node type, that, the, uh, a content type that is only used for views or blocks, um, and you don't want the, it to be available on its own page. So um, there was a module in Drupal 7. I, I don't know if, if this is built into Drupal, uh, modern Drupal core, if they have hidden paths content types. But we had that feature built into to, to Backdrop, but it was pretty obscure, and I think most people didn't know how to use it. So we added a third content type, which uses hidden paths by default, which means that your cards don't have uh, a page. There's no, you, uh, uh, that, that the regular users can go to to use them. Um, they're just content that you can add to views or blocks. And then we put some blocks uh, in the default layout on the front page that are existing content blocks, so they display individual nodes. So these are three different nodes that are displayed in blocks on the home page, uh, sort of in the default setup to help people realize that. If we go to uh, under structure, layouts. This is the whole layout system uh, right now is um, uh, Backdrop comes with four uh, default layouts, uh, a, home, a special home page layout that's again only used on the home page. We have a, a, an admin layout really for the dashboard um, which is, I'll flip over to that quick. 
the dashboard is kind of a, a neat tool. Twin Cities Drupal Camp, their announcement, it's just got a bunch of helpful links. Uh, things like, uh, add, you know, click links to add a new card, uh, a new post, uh, some little reports show you different things about your site. Uh, there are modules in Drupal for Drupal that do this as well, but I, I don't know if Drupal, uh, modern Drupal has a, any kind of a new dashboard built into Core, do you know? Um, this is something I was uh, influential in helping get into Core, so I'm, I, I like it. Uh, but go, So we have a special layout for that. And then there's a default layout, which is all content that doesn't use either the home page or the, the dashboard layout goes to the default. And we can create new layouts, so I can say I'm going to add a new layout. These are the layout template files, so these are uh, different uh, layout uh, templates that are available to me. Again, I could add, uh, there are some contrib layouts which you can add through the contrib browser, or you could create your own uh, layouts uh, and put them in the layouts folder and they would be available here. But uh, that's much less important now because we also have this, um, if you go to the layout templates, we have a, add a flexible layout template and we can um, create a, uh, uh, on the fly, we can create our own layout template where we're going to add a new row with uh, two columns, 50-50. Uh, I'm going to do this pretty quick. We can drop that up here. So we've got a header, you know, and, and then we can save this. And this will become a, a template now when we go to our when we go to our layouts page, the TCDC template is available. I can use that on any page that I want. Um, a, a, a layout template file is a you know an abstract um, uh, configuration of regions uh, and how you want to use them. An actual layout is specific with blocks. You know, it has with configuration and content. So the home page layout uses a layout template. The home page uses the Boxton layout template, but uh, as a layout, it, it has uh, certain blocks already placed. Uh, if we wanted to do a, uh, a special layout, let's if we created a content type for uh, events, and we wanted a special layout for our events content type, we would go to the layouts page, we would add a layout, we, we, you know, maybe we're going to use the same the same template for the home layout. We're just going to do different blocks. We have to give it a path. No, we don't want to give it a path. We have to give it a context. We've been working to make this page easier to use. What's going on here? Put in. Wilbur, help me out. Do I? Oh, I have to do. It well. Required, dude. Yeah, uh, is it no, just no? And now hit add context. Yeah. So um, that is, I get tripped up. I mean, I don't get tripped up anymore, but sort of, uh, but I did at the beginning. Um, no, we don't want an Under individual. Context. I think I need, oh, it's right below here is a sample node. Here we go. It should be node slash percent. Sorry, it's been a while since I did this. So if we add node pass percent, that automatically gives it the context. So what, what I was doing before was trying to assign it a specific node. This is just saying um, th this layout will be available to any nodes right now, but we want it to be only available to events. So we can then set a visibility condition on the layout and say node type. Now we haven't created, created our event content type yet, but if we had an event content type, we could pick that. I'll just use post for now. And right now, uh, this layout would automatically be used for all paid posts, but only for posts. If we go back to the layouts page, there are events. <laughs> Our events layout, which is being used, visibility condition for nodes of type post. And you can create however many layouts like that you want. So, does that give you a sense of how the layout system works? Very panel slate. Yes. Um, it also can be used for just one page. 
Oh yeah, it's good. So you could so say just place place this on this. That pro yeah, that's that's very nice. So Barry, and as the guy who introduced me to display suites, um, it had, there are some display suite features in here, which is once you've created a uh, a node a node based uh, uh, layout mm -hmm. with that that context, we can go into the manage blocks. And we can we have uh, field blocks, so well actually I think I might need to uh, set a visibility condition. No, I did for for posts, so I can. Uh, so then whatever fields you have available. Oops, right. So if I go to add a block, there should be. You know, if I type in field, yeah, uh, it's going to any fields that are on the event or the post content type. Are going to be available to me as blocks. And we'll know that context. It will it will filter that based on because your visibility and context the, was set for post. It's yes. only going to show you those. Fields. Yes. So okay. it'll show me the the various yeah. fields available for posts, yeah. and we can place them individually on the page. Right. Jamie, do you do as a front end developer? Do you do any configuration, or are you just writing CSS and JavaScript? Uh, I do a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. <laughs> Well, that's good. We don't want you to get bored. Okay. Any other comments about this? Another element of the context is that you can use the node, you can use the URL path. So when you create a, uh, let's say, a content type that has a automatic URL path, yeah. that would be like slash event. Right. Now, you could say it applies to pages, but then add the context that is the URL path that it includes event. Okay. Now that layout will only apply to events, and the rest of your pages would use the other layout that would be assigned to that. Okay. So by using that URL path and um, and um, URL aliases, you're able to make do a lot of automation picking which themes you're going to be, or which layouts you're going to be using for different content. Okay. The layout system is very complicated, but you know, there, only some of it is exposed through the UI. Okay. And there are some contrib modules that add a lot of functionality to it, and, and there's some stuff that, that's really built into the API that we haven't uh, fully exposed yet that could use additional work. Um, but but it is very powerful already, and it's it's but it's the biggest thing to wrap your head around is that layout system when you're moving from Drupal seven. It took me a long, quite a while to really get, figure out where, when I'm supposed to be using that instead of my theme to do things because I was just so set in a different mindset. I showed this screen. This is just the view screen, and I basically showed it because we just looked at the thing that's like the most different from Drupal, and you look at this, and this is probably the same. Uh, whether you're in Drupal 7 or even in modern Drupal, this page doesn't really look very different. Now, as you dig around in here, uh, actually today is a release day. We're doing the 26th uh, feature release comes out today for Backdrop. So we've done 26 releases, each of which has had new features, bug fixes, and UI improvements. So there are a lot of little things, and we, do, we uh, I think that the Backdrop community spends a lot of time in trying to make uh, UI improvements to make little things look better. And you might, as you're digging around in here, find that some of these features, the UI is a little better or it's been tweaked, but you're not going to find any major differences in the view system. But that was going to be one of the comments I was going to make is just this UI, mm -hmm. it just looks cleaner, that, especially from Drupal 7, but yes. it, it's even cleaner than modern. So, I think so. So that is, that is really nice. I, I like that. I think we've done a lot of good work. We have a number of people in the core development team whose focus, you know, we had some people that really focus on the, the harder features, but others that just like to work on UI improvements, right? And we're spending a lot of time like we could make this page look better or put better help text here, things like that. And that like that's something that Personally, I spend, uh, when I have time to do core development, it's often I'm just making little UI improvements. And I think they've added up. Over 26 releases, they've added up, and it starts to really. How, how does it handle um, media? That was my question. <laughs> uploaded images, uploaded documents. Sure. That, that's something I've been frustrated <laughs> with Drupal <laughs> forever. So there is. 
it's not the media module, but there is a media a browser that's a little that's different than Drupal 7, right? This is um, for you know we do have. Uh, I don't remember if like this file management kind of stuff was in Drupal 7 core or if, if I, I forget exactly it's how Drupal 7. Very similar to media actually. So it, it's similar to media but it's not the same. I, I think that's important to emphasize. There are certain things that are different but it's very similar in that uh, I think and I don't know that like the how the upgrade works from the media module to this but it does have a media browser so when you're in when you're placing a a file, uh, if, you, if you're going to add a, an image to a, uh, an image field in the content type, it'll say, do you want to add a new one or do you want to pick from an existing one? And this is all in core. And you can say pick from existing and a little uh, uh, browser window opens. Make it, make it a, just a basic page. I think, Tim, what you'll see is that now you were in our browser, so now add an image. A, yeah, I was, I was going to do one with so an image. Very much like media. Yep. Select the And then the you have two tabs. One is for uploading yep. images, which will be in the file system, available. And the other one, so so why don't you go ahead, Tim, upload an image. You can just run through this. Sure. Just give him a screenshot. Oh, no, I can't do that. Just give us a screenshot. That's fine. Uh, I wanted to do better. We than don't the know what he was uh, browsing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the screenshot? Uh, we'll try that. There you go. Look at that. It's a screenshot of some release. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and save that. Um, so now let's edit that. Yep. Add another image. Yep. Now here we can select an image, and there's our screenshot, and there's our card. So now add a card. Oh, we want to add Adding a card to uh, the body. Add a, it's one of the card images. It's oh, one of the oh, images oh, oh. associated with the three cards. cards. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, well, it, are we? We'll yeah. add a card here. This has an image field, so the same. Yeah, oh. I was just gonna say image field versus inline. Kind of well, so the, 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 the browser is available either. Yep. Yeah. And if you go back to content and go back to media, you'll see that your image is there. Mm -hmm. go to, go oh, that's to. right. That's not a view. I expected that to show up on the front page because it was more recent, but it's not a view. They're they. Uh, so go go, go what to do you content. Want me to do? Okay. And go to manage files. Oh yeah. And now we see our screenshot. There's my screen. So this this very much works in the same. This is pretty much all of media module written mm. off. Yeah. So what about what about files that are not images? What about? If I believe they show up right here as well. A YouTube video or an audio file. Yeah. If you go under structure. And this, again, this is all out of the box. We haven't installed this, the media yeah, module. Right, I'm just going to say, this, we're talking core. Modules. Yeah, this, this is all core. core. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now if you go to um, file types. Yeah, we can. We have right. audio, okay. document, image, all in and video. Got it. All of those are the media Perfect. module defaults. Yeah. And all of this is in core. All of this ready for you to use. Excellent. Okay. So this That's also really has cool. display. Um, so, so go back to your content, Tim, and just put in a PDF. So go to your test page. <laughs> Whose presentation is this? You thought this was going to be an easy presentation. <laughs> you thought you were prepared. Uh, so yep. upload it as an image? Image. Now upload. Yeah, I don't know if I PDF. have a PDF available. Uh, on my desktop, I have a test PDF for just this purpose, but I don't know if I have one here on my laptop. So, uh, you know, we're running out of time, so I'd like to bypass that. Trust us that PDFs are also managed by this. You can create file types. You can use them in very similar ways. Okay. Um, any other questions? I think 
I do want to just, I'll, I'll quickly, for the upgrade process, I did have some slides made. This is all from the basic uh, upgrading uh, from Drupal 7 um, uh, project, uh, or, you know, uh, that we have a docs site, and there is uh, some basic introductions for doing an upgrade from Drupal 7. Um, if you follow these, this is the traditional way. There is some new tools that have been uh, that aren't 100% stable yet that actually make this a little simpler. There's something we've got a D2B uh, migrate module, which actually, rather than doing this process, you set up a Drupal site or a backdrop site. You point, to, uh, you open up the D2B migrate module, point it at your database, and it uh, uh, just pulls everything into, and it does some of the stuff that you would do manually here. But it's not entirely stable. If you're a beginner, I think I'd recommend that you kind of follow this step, um, uh, this process. The upgrading from Drupal, upgrade overview. The three uh, broad steps are do doing the research. What are you going to need? What contrib modules have already been ported? Um, what you know? How much custom code do you have? What's going to be involved in that? Um, you want to do that kind of research. Uh, step two is then you, you basically prepare your Drupal. You, you've made a copy of your Drupal seven site, so you've got your Drupal, your live Drupal seven site, and then you've got your, the one you're working on. And you're going to do things like you're going to disable uh, any contrib modules you're not using, get them out of the way, and uninstall them. You're going to figure out if there are, you have contrib modules that there is no backdrop version of them. You're going to figure out what you're going to do with those. Are you going to port it, or are you going to get? Maybe you don't need them, right? Sometimes you just don't need them anymore. Some of them there they have features in core and backdrop core. So you might have had a contrib module in, back, in Drupal that's no longer necessary because there's an alternative module in, in backdrop core or a, an alternative contrib module. So you can do some preparation here. You get the database ready. Things like the blog module, this is actually changing. <laughs> well, a month ago we did a demo and or I was helping somebody do an upgrade and realized the blog module was taken out of core. It was never ported. And so if you had a Drupal 7 site with the blog module, the, the recommended steps were to convert the blog nodes to, to or to create your own blog nodes. So you create a new content type, and then you had to convert the old. And that was kind of a, a workaround. Wilbur and somebody else, like right after that meeting, somebody, well, why don't we just port the dang blog module as a contrib module for, for Drupal, and then you can just run it through the upgrade process. So that's, I don't think it's uh, released yet. Uh, I don't know if it's a stable release yet, but somebody started working on that. and. And it, it, I don't think it's not going to be that complicated. Um, so there were things like that. Like if you did, if you had a, a, the blog module in the past, you had to do some conversions. So you had to do that on the Drupal 7 database, right? I had to convert it to a, a fresh content type before I did my upgrade. Um, you do those kinds of things to your database. Once it's ready, then you just set up a Drupal, a backdrop site. You add all the, the contrib modules that you're going to need. Um, stuff like that. Again, the, there's there's more detailed pages for each of these steps. Uh, you know, for so for steps two, two, there's like, and I had a slide for this, but it's not that important. Go through all the steps of the, you know, this includes things like also, if you had features, if you had features in Drupal 7 site, you need to get them into the database, right, because they won't get upgraded otherwise. But if you unfeatureize your, you know, if you have some views and features, you want to unfeatureize them, get them into the database. And once you've done all of that, then you can just e export that database from your Drupal 7 site into the backdrop site and run update.php. Much the same way you would have done a Drupal 6 upgrade if any of you were around for Drupal 6. <laughs> I know some of you were. You would run update PHP, and in theory, all of your content is upgraded, your views are upgraded. Um, uh, it's my understanding that until fairly recently, um, there was no way to upgrade views to modern Drupal from Drupal 7. You had to recreate all your views. I, yes, but that, that's changed. <laughs> Somebody has recently apparently re re uh, released a module that will upgrade all of your views. So that's become much easier. But I think up to a year ago, people were still recreating their views. And in and, uh, and backdrop, you don't need to do that when you do the upgrade process. And then, of course, as in any upgrade, you, you run the upgrade script, you see what, if it worked. <laughs> and if something didn't work, you go back to the Drupal 7 database, you make some changes, try it again. So, you know, that's basically the upgrade process. But we, you know, I think Wilbur and I have seen simple sites get all of the content migrated in a couple of hours. 
but it's into Bartic theme. <laughs> You know, now you've got it in backdrop with the Bartic theme, and you know your menus maybe don't look the way you want, and you've got no theme, so you still got a lot of work ahead of you. But, but the migration itself, or the upgrade itself, is done. It's now it's just, you know, making it look good, and uh, um, yeah, that's a, a, a good quick summary. I mentioned the D2B. That's something to watch for. If you're, if it's a couple months from now and you're doing an upgrade, I would recommend asking, uh, coming coming to our, our Zulip channel or something and asking how that D2B migrate module is because that could simplify the process for you. Um, backdrop, backdrop upgrade. Th so there, yes, I should mention that there are two Drupal modules that, that are actually very helpful. One is there's a, a backdrop upgrade status module which you can run on your Drupal 7 site and it will list It'll list, for example, all of your contrib modules. I should have mentioned that before. It'll list all of your contrib modules and whether or not they exist in backdrop. So it's a nice list. So that, that stage where I said you need to figure out if your modules exist in backdrop, mm -hmm. there is a Drupal 7 module to help you do that. So oh. to simplify that. And it'll tell you, like, if there's a, you know, if the module was deprecated or removed from her. If it's a core mod, like the blog module, I think it would have told you that when you ran the upgrade status. I, I forget in, in that specific case, but it does things like that. There uh, is also a site audit module, which goes a little bit further. It, it's not specific to, to, for the backdrop upgrade, but it's a site, the site audit module that creates a report which gives you all of your views, all of your content types, things like that, which is just very helpful for planning. In the past, that required running, uh, uh, I think, a Drush command. It, there was no UI for it. And Irina Zacks, that I showed you earlier, she has been working really hard to get and, and, and finished. There's now a UI. So in the UI, you can run that uh, site audit module and get a nice report that shows you your content types, your views, all the things you want to think about when you're doing your upgrade. But you get that with upgrade status as well. So you don't get all of the stuff that you do in the site audit. You don't get all of it, right. but you get a lot of things in upgrade status. Sure. You get all the modules, you get all the views, you get the content types, okay. and how many pieces of content are in each. Okay. You get all the uh, taxonomy terms. I think what you don't get is fields and more granular information. Okay. So. Fair enough. For almost all sites, the backdrop upgrade status module will give you a you good review of yeah. what you need to get. Through. Well, and, and it gives you it gives you backdrop specific stuff. The site audit module isn't giving you anything backdrop specific. That's yep. just a general audit of your site. So you might want to use both. Whatever. Any questions? We should wrap up. We, we ran over, but it's it's lunchtime, so. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to end the the recording.